Uh, this story out of T-Mobile. T-Mobile is requesting more network help from the FCC. Here's what I mean by network help. All right, so what I mean is T-Mobile is requesting permission for the continued use and free access of available 600 megahertz spectrum. This would be the sixth time in a row or the sixth consecutive request that T-Mobile has put in for this unpaid access. Since the pandemic started about a year and a half ago. All right, so it's now what? Middle of August. The pandemic was last year and like very late in the winter. It was like February, March or whatever. So I want to say that maybe it was in April or something like that. They started getting special access to spectrum licenses in the 600 megahertz frequency. They were getting some from DISH. Uh, they were able to use that for free. They were also getting some from the FCC, right? The Federal Communications Commission. So they're going to go ahead and they're going to request and submit that request. I think they did it actually a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. It was, it was near the end of July. And this would extend the access through the month of November in what's referred to as a special temporary authority. So it's basically an access that the FCC permits upon emergency use. So if there is spectrum that is not being utilized, nobody is leasing it, nobody is operating it, it's not a licensed spectrum that is being paid for, the FCC reserves the right to provide it to you know, consumer use. People can take advantage of it and use it because they need it. I think the situation here is there are certain markets where T-Mobile really needs the support because their market share is high and they don't have proper densification. And even if they do, they may not have proper backhaul. There's a lot of different things that could lead to a slower network. But as long as you're getting out ample amounts of spectrum, it can offer some remedy to the problem of congestion. So markets like San Diego, California, L.A., Tucson, Arizona was mentioned. I think it's Bellingham, Washington was another market that was mentioned. Those, to me, sound like areas where maybe T-Mobile has high market share. And even with all their Spectrum holdings and even with their networking and the densification and N41 and all of that, they must be struggling with congestion on many uh, instances. So having any additional Spectrum is a boost. So whether it's an additional 5, 10, 15, 20 megahertz of 600 megahertz, it probably helps a lot. Many people reached out to me during the start of the pandemic and said, wow, band 71 all of a sudden has incredible throughput here. I used to only see 15 megahertz. Now I got 25. Well, that was probably the dish access, the dish 600 megahertz being, you know, offered for free to T-Mobile customers. So the FCC was doing a nice job of allowing that to happen. The carriers responded, and it was good to see. Dish also let AT&T and Verizon use AWS. I think only AT&T was able to utilize it in certain places where they had the proper gear to operate that particular uh, block of AWS. So just something to consider here. Uh, T-Mobile's claim is that it is in the public's best interest, a.k.a. our network is congested in these places. <laughs> and they went ahead and they just will continue to blame the pandemic, right? As they freeload off of the available FCC 600 megahertz spectrum. I just want to say to the people out there that act and pretend and like, you know, T-Mobile's this innocent carrier. <laughs> They're as cutthroat as they come. Wolf in sheep's clothing, you know, Eugene, sweaty armpits. But here they are, right? They're, oh, we need help. <laughs> Anyways, T-Mobile said we will put the otherwise fallow spectrum to work. All right, good. I'm cool with that. As long as it's helping people, I'm on that side. I don't care about carriers. I never cared about carriers. I will never place a carrier in front of the consumer. It will never happen. Ever. You will never come a day where I'm going to 
support T-Mobile, Verizon, or AT&T before the people. Because we're the consumers. It's about us. They already have the advantage. They're the multi-billion dollar corporation. We're the innocent people that have, you know, minimal salaries and we work hard for a little, you know. So, yeah, I'll always support the people. I'm always on the people's side. I am one of the people. <laughs> uh, T-Mobile 700 megahertz apparently has some pretty bad interference and issues along the Mexico border. And this type of spectrum access is going to help a lot. Uh, as that 700 megahertz is becomes, you know, I mean, I, I think in most cases they only have like five megahertz of band 12 anyways. So just getting the additional band 71, whether it's used for 5G or LTE makes no difference. I'm assuming that they probably put it to LTE or, or some to LTE and some to 5G. Uh, so this will boost any of those band 12 issues as well with the interference with Mexico telco. Uh, the DOJ totally dropped the ball in this instance. Uh, what I wanted to speak to is that DISH has a lot of 600 megahertz spectrum. But T-Mobile has repeatedly said they don't want to pay them to use it. I remember last year looking at a letter from uh, T-Mobile. I, I don't know if it was, I forget the PDF. It was either written to DISH or it was written to the FCC in response to DISH requesting a lease deal. And then I think it ended up going to the DOJ. So Dish has a bunch of 600 megahertz and they have it completely national. So it makes sense that T-Mobile could just lease it from Dish while they're building out their network. And then it's like a win-win situation. T-Mobile pays for the access, allowing Dish to generate revenue, helping facilitate the fourth carrier. And then T-Mobile gets the added capacity to their low band frequencies and everybody wins. But T-Mobile doesn't want to pay Dish. They will pay Columbia Capital. Uh, they will pay, uh, you know, for EBS and BRS licenses to churches and schools. But they will not pay Dish. And people have the guts and the gunction to tell me that T-Mobile is not anti-competitive. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I believe T-Mobile was forced by the DOJ last year, around this time of the year, actually. They were forced to, I believe, have 30% of their populated areas from DISH with the 600 megahertz. Uh, DISH does have national, so that's terrible. DOJ completely dropped the ball in those merger terms. It should have been way more than just 30% of the population. That should have been in at least 50 top PEAs. It should be like 70 to 80% pops. Anyways, I hope that as DISH starts to build out its network... I hope DISH requests similar access from the FCC, and the FCC allows it, just despite T-Mobile. Because remember, DISH is the small carrier, T-Mobile's the big carrier that just eliminated another one, and got a 5G stimulus from the government, from the DOJ. No more sore winner than sweaty armpits himself, Eugene. <laughs> Taking it all the way. Good for the customer, getting extra capacity, T-Mobile taking advantage of the, you know, the the pandemic or whatever. All right, keep that same energy, you know, for everybody that hates on Dish. Keep that same energy about T-Mobile when you see things like this. We're, we're the poor little carrier. We're the little guy. There's only three wireless carriers right now. There ain't no little carriers. You're bigger than AT&T, according to you. Or are we just going to speak out of both sides of our mouth? Yeah, we have more postpaid customers than AT&T. But then you want to cry, we're the little carrier. <laughs> Keep that same energy.